And I would like to draw our attention to the book of Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 quickly. Second Peter chapter 1. As we talk about the issue of grace. 1 verse 1 says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, can you see what Peter said about our salvation? He said, those people that have obtained a like precious faith like us, how did they obtain it? It is through the righteousness of God. It is through... It is through the justice system of heaven that it was possible for them to have the like precious faith like ours. Are you there? Verse 2, which is my emphasis, is a salutation. And if you see that salutation, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied. First of all, when we talk about grace, the need to grow in grace is not arithmetically. The need to grow in grace is actually a geometric need. And I will explain what I mean by that. So he said, Grace and peace. He didn't, he didn't say, Grace and peace be added to you. He said, grace and peace. So after 20 minutes, you join me. Grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And the agency through which grace can be multiplied is through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord through the knowledge of God um, many of us in this room can relate with the knowledge that is sown on the soil of your soul knowledge that you acquire either by experience knowledge that you acquire either by study knowledge that you acquire either by making yourself available in a lecture now that's soulish knowledge but the knowledge that we are speaking about here which is the way by which we know god is spiritual knowledge and spiritual knowledge is quite different from physical knowledge for instance the bible says that we have an unction from the holy one and it is by that unction that we know all things the unction is talking about is a knowledge faculty, the intuitive faculty of knowledge that is built, that our spirit man becomes capable of the moment the Holy Spirit takes residence inside of our spirit. Just like a, you don't need to educate a dog to know how to bark. It is in the DNA of the dog to know what it means to bark and how it is to bark. When you receive the life of God, one of the things that the life of God is capable of is that it can give you spiritual knowledge. Such knowledge that you were not taught, such knowledge that you did not learn, but knowledge that is handed out to you by the Holy Spirit. And it will interest you to know that 70% of the speakings of God is in the knowing of revelation. This man is saying that grace be multiplied unto you that means you need a multiplication of grace consistently in your life and the agency through which this grace is multiplied is through the knowledge of God and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ um, You cannot know God on the cerebral plane because God is not an idea. God is not a concept. God is a person. And it is your spirit that has the calibration, that is calibrated to understand and to participate in the dimensions of God. 
your soul is not calibrated to operate in the dimensions of God. Your soul is designed to take instructions from your spirit man. Your spirit is supposed to instruct your soul. And your soul is supposed to instruct your body to come back into alignment. Now, the human being is, is designed to operate from inside out. The reason why your spirit man is an emphasis is because that's the place that was designed as God's abode. Are you still with me? Now, now, if you are going to interact with God, at, according to the book of John chapter 4, verse 24. Can you give me John chapter 4, verse 24 on the screen? John chapter 4, verse 24. This is an education that Jesus brings to the woman at the well. He says, God is spirit. And they that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth. What's the meaning of truth there? What's the meaning of truth? First of all, at least we understand that if we are going to contact God who is spirit, it is your spirit man, your spirit man that is enhanced with the calibration to be able to contact God and to participate in God. So just in case God decides to contact you, the experience is not going to be cerebral. It's not a mental experience. I'm trying to describe the processes, the spiritual processes involved in a man getting to know God, to perceive God, to know what God is doing, to know what God wants. It is only in the process and the protocol that enhances the knowledge of God that we can find multiplied grace. Now, you see, like we said before in the introductory scripture, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them. They were given a task that was not humanly possible. Because of that, they had to be given an allocation of grace for them to be able to carry out an impossible task. Your life is going to be natural. It's going to follow natural processes. It's going to follow the natural order if there is no grace on your life. So if you are going to operate in a superhuman perspective, a superhuman ability, it's not reasonable for people to like you, but they just like you. It's not normal for this kind of people, this set of people, to accept people. But when you show up there, your own experience with them is different. In fact, those days when I used to work in the oil industry, it was the most wicked chief executive that gave me a double promotion. The most wicked. The most wicked. It was the one that the tool, the vessel that God used to... <laughs> and great grace was upon them. One of the things we are going to ask God today is that he will make grace, great grace available to us. Yeah. But when you finish praying that prayer, sit down and understand that even if he makes the provision, you will not be able to contact it except you grow in the knowledge of God. And unfortunately for us, the knowledge of God is not cerebral. If it were cerebral, I know almost all of us here will come out with distinctions because we look capable, mentally capable. But unfortunately, even though spirituality is not a friend of mental slothfulness, it is also not cerebral. You will need to exercise your heart. You will need to exercise your spirit. And I, need to, I said that deliberately because your heart and your spirit is not the same. God can only be known experientially. When he, he begins to transact with you, it's based on his transactions with you that you can know him. Oh my God. I don't want to use this scripture, but if it will help enhance your understanding, I think I need to use it. It's extreme anyway. Have you read the scripture that the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife and she conceived? That's an experience. It's not just knowing her name. It's an experiential dimension of participating with his wife. That's the kind of knowledge. That's how you know God. You participate with God experientially. 
and the only organ in you that can contact God is your recreated human spirit energized by the Holy Ghost it means that if you don't know what it is to prosper in the operations of Christ that means stirring up and exercising your spirit you are not likely to know God you are not likely to know you will know about God you can even you can even like the idea of God you can you come to church oh yeah you are participating in stuff but you don't know God the knowledge of God is personal is private is affectionate it's personal it is private it's affectionate therefore I've forgotten the other one now it's 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 born in the heart of men that know how to exercise their spirit is that clear with me are you with me okay so if I begin to pray in tongues for instance and I begin to pray in the spirit and I begin to gain ascendance in the spirit now because I am stirring up the oppression of Christ through my prayer I'm exercising my spirit a time will come in that initiative that God will begin to move inside of my being inside of my spirit man your ability to discern the movement of God inside of your spirit discerning it enough to know what is troubling God what is on God's mind that's a big deal it's a very very big deal and that's why most of the time we come for night vigils we pray all night you don't you didn't pick anything it's not because God was not speaking you were not in alignment it's a big deal you will need to exercise your spirit you will need to focus on God and then know how God operates oh you are not with me I thought I, I would have helped but let's let's leave it at that point um, so we know that the access point into the multiplication of grace is through the knowledge of God right now I wanted to help us with a few tips on how on what you need to be doing deliberately intentionally so that you'll be able to discern the movement of God in your inner chamber because God is revealed in your secret and inward parts that's what Jeremiah said is revealed in your secret and your inward parts and he's describing the parts of the spirit the human spirit has parts okay let's leave it let's leave it let's leave it let's do it Let, let's just go to scriptures that you are used to <laughs> hallelujah there are parts inside there are parts inside it's just like um you buy a cell phone and when you buy a cell phone you introduce a sim card before you bought the cell phone the phone was capable of some things the phone could, you could use the uh, the calculator on the phone you could use the touch light on the phone you could use some of the functions of, on the phone before you introduce the sim card so the phone was not altogether helpless without the sim card but the moment you introduce the sim card the phone now has the ability to take advantage of the potential of the gsm network through the agency of the sim card now that's what happened to you when you gave your life to christ the holy spirit who is the sim card was inserted into your human spirit and because of the presence of the holy spirit you are capable of exploring the realm of god the realm of god became accessible the realm of god became available the realm of God became explorable. Are you there? Yes, it became explorable. So if you are going to secure an understanding of, of what is upon the mind of God, you will need to stir up your spirit. You need to exercise your spirit. And in exercising your spirit, there are two, three major things that you do to exercise your spirit one is to pray in the spirit it takes about an hour of tongues if you are not backsliding and you are still within the framework hallelujah 
it takes like one hour of tongues for you to stir up your spirit enough to begin to sense the things of God. Jesus, in attempting to explain to us what it means to be born again in the book of John chapter 3, verse 3, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in the eyes of Jesus, the moment you become born again, there is a capacity that you receive. In fact, okay, it will interest you to know that the word see there in the Greek is ido, which means to perceive by reason of the use of senses. Stay with me. Are you with me? Now listen. When you were nine months old and you were in the womb about to be delivered, your eyes were fully developed, but they were not useful. Because your eyes were not designed for the womb. You had to be born first in order for your eyes to become relevant. Your ears were fully developed, but they were not designed from the womb. You had to be born first before your ears became relevant. Jesus is saying, you have spiritual senses that will never be activated until you become born again first. Then your spiritual senses are activated because the Holy Spirit comes to animate those senses so that through the workings of those senses, you can perceive what is obtainable in the kingdom of God. That's what it means when it says you have an unction. An unction is a faculty where there are collocation of senses. And it's the Holy Spirit himself that comes to activate those senses so that you can perceive God. And the perception of God that we're talking about is not perceiving God in heaven. Perceive, no, that's not what we're talking about. What? Perceiving God in your heart. 